In the last section, we started putting together our block class. We added two instance properties to it, the email controller and the password controller. Now in this section, we're going to stop development of the block for just a second, even though we've only written two lines right here. I want to point out a possible issue that we might run into at some point in the future. Okay, just some possible issue that we might run into. So in this section, I want to give you kind of a hypothetical scenario around the code that you and I just wrote. So quick diagram. So here on the left, we've got our block. We just added that email controller property to it. And then on the email controller, which is a stream controller, we know that we have the sync and we have our stream. We also know that we have our email text input. And as we discussed a couple sections ago, the email text input has a on change property, which accepts a function that will be called with the new value that a user enters into that input. And it also has the air text property that we're going to use to show a validation message on the text input as well. So essentially, we want to make sure that this property right here on changed is somehow kind of like wired up to or calling the add function on the sync. Because remember, that's how we add new values into our stream. And then on the other side, after the value comes into the sync and that new value gets communicated over to the stream, we then want to produce a possible validation message and kind of pipe that back over to the error text property. So everything I just described is reality. Like that is exactly what we want to do. No hypothetical, hypothetical scenario there. That is exactly what we want to do. However, I want to flip back over to my code editor and I'm going to write out a little bit of kind of pseudocode or just a little bit of sample code. And that's going to point out a possible issue that we're going to have when we try to implement all this stuff. Okay. So I'm going to go back over to my login screen dot dart file. I'm going to find my email field method right here. And here's my text field. So inside my text field, I'm going to add just a little bit of code. This is not real code. Do not write this. So I'm going to put a comment here. Don't write this. This is just a quick example I want to give you of a possible issue that we're going to run into in the future. Okay. So our text field is going to have the on change property. So let's imagine that we want to add that on. That's going to accept a callback that will be called with the new value inside the text field. So then inside of here, we need to take that new value and communicate it over to the add method on the sync. So think about how we would do that inside of here. We might have to write something like my block. So find my instance of a block, which presumably we have defined somewhere inside this file. And then we're going to try to get the email controller because that's the thing that is dealing with the email field. I want to get the sync property on there and then reference add and I'll pass in new value like so. And then we'll kind of repeat that same process of the code we might have to write to make this stuff happen for the air text as well. So the air text goes inside of the input decoration. Again, don't write this. I'm just trying to make a quick example here. So we might have to do something like air text is block dot email controller dot stream or something like that. I don't know, something similar to that. So what's wrong here? What is the possible issue that we're running into? Well, when you look at this code, you might very quickly notice that we have this like email controller, big piece of text right here, kind of duplicated all over the place between these two functions. And especially down here inside of on changed, we have to reference the email controller and then dot sync and dot add. So the possible problem here is not really a big problem. I just want to suggest that it seems like we are making our API for working with the block, or in other words, the way in which we get new values into our block a little bit more complicated than maybe it has to be. Because we have to reference the block, and then we have to reference the email controller, and then sync, and then dot add. That's a lot of things for you and I to have to remember. Personally, I think it would be way cooler if we instead had the ability to call a function on the block of something just like change email, something like that. Wow, that actually looks a lot better. Now, rather than having to reference email controller, because I mean, I don't know what that is per se. I don't really know what a sync is. I don't know what add is. That's a lot of complicated terminology. I really feel like it would be a lot better if I could just say change email. That's a super clear function name. And any other engineer who walks onto my project is going to very quickly understand what the purpose of change email probably is. 
So that's the problem that I want to suggest might exist at some point in time. I think that the way that we're kind of setting ourselves up over here is going to lead to a lot of kind of complicated, hard to understand code. Because again, other engineers who are walking onto your project might not have any idea what the heck a email controller is. That's not super clear. It would be a lot better in the case of the air text right here if another engineer could just reference something like block.email or something like that. Again, really clear what this is trying to communicate or maybe email air or something, I don't know. That's a lot more clear than saying like block.emailscontroller.stream. So again, that's the problem that I would like to address. I want to make the way in which we interact with this block a lot more clear and obvious. So of course there is a rather easy way to deal with this inside of Dart. So I'm gonna delete all the code that I just added. And then we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back to the next section and we're going to learn how we can kind of set up this class of block right here to give us a lot easier access to the functions and properties inside these two controllers that we actually care about. Because outside this class, we don't really care about the entire controller. We just care about the add function on the sync and the stream. That's it, we don't really care about anything else. So again, quick break, come back to the next section and we'll figure out how to do that.